Today we're going to take a closer look at the AIM 120C and finding out exactly how much difference it makes to be higher when we fire this missile. Most people know the higher you are, the further and faster you can get this thing to fly, but today we're going to get all scientific and find out by exactly how much. <laughs> Hello YouTube, welcome to the video, DCS pilots and an especially warm welcome to returning subscribers of the channel. It's really nice to have you here with me again, especially considering it's been an absolute age since I've uploaded. I'm cutting in last minute over the top of what I'd already done to share this with you, which is to talk about the Amram missile and how it behaves online in the multiplayer environment. We know it's got problems, the internet has got lots of posts and lots of threads all over talking about it and it is something that I'm wanting to address in the future, so make sure you subscribe to that. Now one of the big complaints is that content creators never talk about this issue and I get it I'm by far not one of the biggest channels but I am a slowly up and coming one and do pride myself with having that free voice and we are going to discuss it so make sure you subscribe for that we will be addressing it soon but for now let's get on with today's video hemisphere so the weather's been nice where you are make sure to add that into the comments and let us know now I can hear the guy at the back saying enough I didn't come in and click on that video to find out what kind of problems you'll be having I hear you, I hear you. And so we're going to jump over into the experimentation room right now and lay out exactly how we're going to measure the performances of this missile and then we'll go measure it. Okay, so here we are in the test situation and the way that we're going to do this is be in pursuit here with two enemy targets here and here. The enemy targets being the TU-22 Mike III. Why? It's got a large radar cross section and it can shift. It's going to be 20 nautical miles away from us when we fire one of them down at 5,000 feet, the other up at 20,000 feet. The reason why will become clear later. We're going to be at various altitudes when we fire our missile from the floor all the way up to 40,000 feet. We're going to do each of these tests at 5,000 foot increments. When we fire the missile, we're going to place a marker down in tack view after the fact so we can measure this very precisely. And then that missile is going to go out until the end of the test there's going to be two ways that we measure the end of the test and these are going to combine to give us our two results. The first method will fire off the missile, start the stopwatch and then see how far that missile goes in 30 seconds. We'll convert that into an average speed and there's our first result. The second part of the test, we're going to measure the missile no matter how far it flies throughout the duration of the test until the speed of that missile finally dips below Mach 1.0. There are going to be some people that say, yes, but a missile that's flying less than Mach 1.0 can still connect with an enemy target, certainly if they're doing less than Mach 1 themselves. I do agree with you. However, when we're higher up in the test, a missile flying less than Mach 1.0 is unable to sustain flight. And so therefore I had to draw the line somewhere. And I thought, seeing as we're firing at Mach 1, that's going to be the stop point. For now, we're going to make a start in the cockpit. There's the last few little bits on the screen here. Pause it if you need to read it, because we're going to get cracking. All right, so here we are in DCS, the F-16. The reason I can't go down to the floor is the F-16 actually loses lock, and I've been toying around with the elevation and the bars. And for some reason, even though we're over water, below about 1,500 feet, it loses lock. And if you take a look here, I've got my elevation bars. I've pushed it up. Remember, this guy's about 10,000 feet, so that, sorry, about 5,000 feet, so there's no reason why he should, we should lose lock on this guy. I realise this ain't a bug video, but I just wanted to put out there why I'm not doing this from the floor at zero or as close as damn it. Instead, we'll be doing it from 2,000 feet. So here we are, fast approaching launch height. I'll take you through the first one with me, and then after that, I'll just get on with it. There's 1.0. I'll just wait for that to tick down. There's the Fox 3 launch. We'll go ahead and put the autopilot on so we don't lose that. And we're going to come over into TAC view now. There we see the missile launching. And if we look at its speed there, 1.6, 1.5, 1.4, 1.3, 1.4. It's still got plenty of height on 1.1. And there is missile Mach 1.0. Clearly not able to reach the target, nowhere near. So we're going to add object here and we'll just make it as the bulls. Okay. And that bullseye is exactly where the missile's launched. We'll forward the time until that missile, which is up here, dips below Mach 1.0. There's Mach 1. There it is, 99. We'll ignore our own aircraft. 
We see the bullseye. That was the exact moment we launched the missile in 3D space. There we see the AMRAM at its current location as it dips below Mach 1.0. And if we look at the distance between the two, the bullseye where the launch was and the AMRAM now, we see it's traveled 8.86 nautical miles. Right, for the second part of this test, we want to measure the speed of the missile, the average speed over the course of the first 30 seconds. And so there goes the launch. And we see that was at 2 minutes 32 seconds into the replay. Time that onwards. Towards uh, 3 minutes and 2 seconds. There's one. There's two. Pause. And we see in 30 seconds it travels 9.28 nautical miles all right so here we are with the first set of results we're down at 2,000 feet the enemy target that we fired at was at 5,000 feet we're going to double the average speed to get us from 30 seconds to a meaningful speed of 18.56 nautical miles per minute that of course only counts for the first 30 seconds but we want the speed in per minute and we've got a missile range of 18.92 nautical miles until that missile dips below Mach 1.0. Quick glance at the results for the second test here. Parameters were the same apart from the target aircraft being higher. That meant the missile had to loft higher in the early stages for a slightly lower average speed but a slightly further distance overall and if that ain't a clue of things to come then i don't know what is there we go 5000s just waiting for the speed there's mac one there's the fox three ballpark terms were about three quarters of a nautical mile extra both on the distance and in terms of the average speed for the first 30 seconds versus the shot we took down at 2000 feet I wonder if firing at the higher target is going to make any difference Fox again. Three. Nothing too exciting with this particular result, but if we take a look over at the chart that's beginning to form, we can clearly see a positive trend line along the lower axis. We've got the altitudes down there. And if we look up at the side, we've got the total distance that the missile was able to reach in nautical miles. The orange aircraft here, by the way, is the higher one. The blue aircraft is the lower one. Just think orange is nearer the sun and that's how I remembered it. So with that tidbit, let's continue. Box three. The results from 10,000 feet. I'm going to be combining these from now on to save time. And we can see here already, even though we're just a few thousand feet up, got two extra nautical miles on the overall distance. And in terms of speed, we're getting pretty much the same thing again. To be honest about this, things are looking fairly good already, even though we haven't increased the height that much. And if we extrapolate this out by looking at the graph, we can see this line ain't a straight line. We've got a tiny little bit of an exponential curve thing going on here. All right, 15,000 feet, 102, 101, 1. Box three. Pause if you need to study these any closer, but quick summary. Things trending upwards a mile or two across the board here at 15,000. Coming up to the 20,000 foot shot. Box three. Twenty thousand feet and we can see a couple of things here results continue to curve upwards but we're starting to see a split between the five and the twenty thousand foot target widen a little bit that's of course to be expected the missile on the twenty thousand foot target having more time in the thinner air mac one fox three Big gains this time, three to four nautical miles when we compare like for like to the 20,000 foot shot. And you can see 
the gap between the two targets widening even further. In fact, that is responsible for a whole nautical mile at this stage. The missile that remains in the thinner air going much further than the missile that's got all that gravity to work with, but descending into the thicker air. You can see thinner air really is king when it comes to any sort of a missile. Mac 1, Fox 3, and Sack View. Pause them if you want to focus on the individual results because I want to switch straight to the graph. Look at what has happened at 30,000 feet. We've got a massive diverge between the two targets here. The 20,000 foot one continues on its exponential climb. However, the 5,000 foot one peeling away big time now. And if you look on the left, I've had to yet again increase the nautical mile on the axis. The TU at 20,000 foot is more or less off the charts at this point. That is absolutely insane. The difference between between 25 and 30,000 foot getting ever bigger. Is this trend possibly going to continue on? And as we climb up to 35,000 feet, take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this. Look at that thing whizzing around. That is absolutely incredible. If you've seen any videos online of legit jets doing these kind of climbs, it's exactly the same thing. It is something else to see that thing whizzing around. When you think how long that takes in an airliner, this is something else. 353, 352, out she goes. And once again, back into tack view. Pause them if you need them because, oh my goodness, look at this. We're talking 11 extra miles versus a 30,000 foot shot and target down below. We're talking about two and a half extra miles. And so difference between 30 and 35, wow. Now I don't see how this can continue at 40,000 feet as we come for the ultimate shot. Let's find out. And there's Mac 1, Fox 3. Don't forget, those of you that are wanting to know exactly how was this measurement done in TacView, I'm going to break that down right after the results. And if you did find this video useful and or informative, please make sure that you hit the like button. I'd very much appreciate that. And now over to the results. 101. Mac 1, as soon as I see the 99, which is there, I'm pausing. And look at that, 44.46 nautical miles. Wow, how's about that? All right, guys, you heard the excitement there. Look at that insane range. And if I jump over to the higher target, look at that massive difference between 40,000 feet versus 35 there. That's an additional 13 miles and the rest just for an extra 5,000 feet, which is absolutely insane. Wow. The exponential curve for the higher target continues to climb away. This time, the missile firing at the higher target is able to travel well over 15 miles further than the missile that was aimed at the lower target. So they're just highlighting how much of a difference that thicker air makes. One thing that we haven't looked at yet is a chart showing the average speeds of the missile. So let's go ahead. A quick look at the graph and you can see it doesn't really matter so much whether the missile is climbing or descending. We've got very minor differences here. But what really does matter and no surprise there is the height that we were at when we shot the missile. And you can see on the high end of 40,000 feet, the results are around 28, 29 nautical miles per minute. Roughly 70 to 80% faster than the same missile shot down on the deck where we were lucky to get 18 nautical miles per minute in summary three words altitude is king the aim 120c range pays off and dividends with every thousand feet that we add on average speed for the first 30 seconds is increased by approximately 0.29 nautical miles per minute for every thousand feet that we add on to answer the thumbnail title though in an oversimplified way, the difference that a thousand feet makes in range is 0.51 nautical miles per thousand feet when we're shooting at a lower target and 0.93 nautical miles in range per thousand feet of height that we add on for a higher target. But as with everything in life, we know that the answer isn't that simple if we've seen this video. For example, the difference that a thousand feet makes from 2000 up to 15,000 feet is only 0.35 nautical miles. And that applies equally to both low and high targets. However, the difference from 25 to 40,000 feet is absolutely insane. 
If we're firing at the lower target, we get an extra 0.61 nautical miles for every thousand feet we ourselves add onto the clock. And if we're firing at the higher target, it's a whopping 1.63 nautical miles of additional range for every thousand feet that we add on between 25 and 40,000 feet. The higher the better, no surprise there. In a future video, we'll take a look at what difference does it make to be faster when we launch the missile? Clearly, the faster the better, right? But by how much? And at what point does it cross over between being higher? For example, if you could go Mach 1.5 or Mach 2, is that more beneficial than going from, say, 20,000 feet to 25? You know, which one of those two would be better? And another thing that is a good time at the minute for DCS, there's lots of new stuff coming out. But as well, I do want to bring back around to what we mentioned earlier in the video, some of the bugs and glitches that were coming up. For example, in this video, I couldn't get a lock below 1500 feet on a target that was above water like me, less than 20 miles away. I couldn't do it. And I was also in the F-18 separately the other day, and I had the same problem when using the sea radar in the F-18. I couldn't see any ships when I was down below about 2,000 feet, even though they were about 10 miles away, which is ridiculous. Again, this is one of these bugs that will hopefully be ironed out soon, but it just goes to show, yes, it's great to hear that they've announced about eight or nine new things in the last month or so, you know, half of which have been maps, I believe. But it's not always a great thing when there are big issues with the core game, because don't forget, every time that they add one new module that maybe does 10, 20 new things, that's a whole host of new bugs that potentially is being added into the game. And if they can't get their existing stuff ironed out before then, I'm not always sure it's a great thing to do. Don't get me wrong. I love things and advancing and progressing and I get both sides of the equation. Oh, well, it's a business and they've got to sell stuff. They don't make money by fixing the old stuff. I get that. But both of those things from a player's point of view are important. And actually, I would say for most people here who've already bought a load of stuff, what's more important to you is that all that stuff works and works as it is intended rather than there's a few shiny new toys dangled out in front of you that, oh, look at this, go buy that in early access. Because again, not always the best thing, but I'm not here complaining. Of course, it's a game that we all love. And until next time, that'll be it from me. Wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.